Shred Shack, 89.7 FM, mywcwp.org. Now, normally, this is the time where we would do the hit list, but we are playing some catch-up, and we are going to be, for the next couple of weeks, kind of getting ourselves back on track with top three videos. So, we're going to start off with February. Dan has picked a lot of the good ones. Dan picked all the good ones. He picked two of the good ones, and one of them that, honestly, I didn't listen to. Right. But uh, we managed to get together a list of our own. It is very reflective of our own personal tastes. Uh, so why don't we start off the list with Power Trip. So good. Very good. It was really good. Like, I think I remember hearing it on Sirius for the first time. Like, they were playing Executioner's Tax, Swing of the Axe, and I was rocking out so hard to it in my car. Oh, that's such a good song. I, I love it. <laughs> uh, the whole album was really good. It had this amazing, like, kind of mesh of, like, hardcore and punk to it, but it really did, like, stretch out as far as I think that they could go with it. Honestly, it kind of almost brought me back to like our metalcore days. I was thinking that. Yeah, it's it's a very I don't know where they're from, but uh, the whole album had this whole New York hardcore feel to it. Very uh, reminiscent of uh, like newer Agnostic Front yeah. or like Sworn Enemy, that type of thing. But uh, the whole album was really good. I enjoyed it basically start to finish. <laughs> Love me some Power Trip. I, I can't wait to hear more of it. I'm mad at myself for not listening to more Power Trip before this. Well, we're going to have to listen to more Power Trip before this. I guess so. Yeah. To be honest, the inclusion of this album is open for debate and largely dependent on what your definition of heavy metal is, since Horizon tends to veer more toward influences from Deep Purple than, say, Black Sabbath. However, this is my list and I'm putting it here. That and the fact that they were signed to both Metal Blade Records and Century Media Records. Proof enough for me, suck it. I've mentioned bands in past videos that have an anachronistic sound, and Horizon is among them, playing a style with such recording quality that this could not have possibly been recorded in the last 20 years, let alone the last few months. These Swedes take it one step further and not only sound the part, but look the part as well. Did I really make my It's Like the Movie The Village if that movie didn't suck joke? I feel like I did. Somebody find out. If you're a fan of 70s rock bands like Boston or Thin Lizzy, or even the earliest Judas Priest material, you'll love this band. The tunes are catchy as hell, often anthemic and perhaps a bit cheesy. The guitar sound is thin but powerful with a shit ton of harmonies. The rhythm section is solid as hell and the vocals tie it all together with an unrefined quality to the wailing. Top it off with production quality that is clear enough to give all the instruments space, but seemingly dated enough to be charming rather than detrimental, and you've got yourself an awesome and surprising release. Number two on the list, uh, Black Star Riders. Surprise, surprise, I, I went with Black Star Riders again. This is the second top three video I've done where I mentioned Black Star Riders. We're going to have to do another thing where you where like how we don't mention Metallica or, you know, Nightwish in a video. I'm not making a gentleman's agreement to not talk about Black Star Riders. Okay, fine. Heavy Fire is awesome. <laughs> Black Star Riders, for those of you who don't know, is the reincarnation of Thin Lizzy. Mm -hmm. It's basically the band without Phil. And the they, they changed their name so that they could keep making music under a new name while keeping the original kind of in a good spot and it's secure in its legacy. Okay. And 
there were always shades of Thin Lizzy in the music. There's a couple of little bits of it here, but it was very apparent in albums like in albums like The Killer Instinct. This I think is the farthest that they've gone away from that. I think it goes like it's different track to track and there's some songs that definitely have the old school vibe like Dance with the Wrong Girl yeah. is definitely an old school song but then you have like Who Rides the Tiger and uh, we're probably going to end up playing Testify or Say Goodbye later but my god that song is good. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Black Star Riders, uh, Heavy Fire, definitely worth a listen to, especially if you're like an old school rock fan and you want to kind of get something that kind of brings yeah. you back to that. I don't think we need to reiterate our usual sentiments about thrash metal since we seem to say it every month or so now, especially considering the last 18 months of new releases from all names of thrash, both legendary and soon to be so. Furthermore, I don't think there's any more that needs to be said specifically about Overkill. They are living legends and consistently release great material, with the grinding wheel besting the output of several of their contemporaries. From the steady build of Mean Green Killing Machine to the solemn end of the title track, Overkill remain on a tear nearly 40 years after their initial conception, blending all variations of their past with the undeniable Black Sabbath influence when they dare to, quote, slow it down, unquote. Goddamn Trouble and Finest Hour are fist-pumping romps that border on catchy, while Red, White, and Blue and Come Heavy are cheeky but fun as hell. As a whole, the album rarely loses its momentum, pummeling the listener for 60 solid minutes, unabashed, unabated, and unopposed. Finally, <laughs> my personal choice for this uh, month of February. That's weird to say in, you know, July. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much all you need to know, it is. this is the definition of nerdy heavy metal. Yeah. It's entirely instrumental, and it's pretty much all covers. It is all Star covers. Wars. That's all it is. It's just covers of Star Wars. It's the Star Wars soundtrack covered in metal. It's, it's awesome. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I told some friends about this, and they were really skeptical. And then I showed them Duel of the Fates. Perfect. And then, and then they were just like, all right, I take it back. This is amazing. Like, <laughs> just, I got to listen to more of this. The way that they go about certain songs from the soundtrack, because first of all, the Star Wars soundtracks are always good. Yes. Uh, movie to movie, they've had amazing songs. That's been movie. probably the only good thing that came out of the first, you know, w episodes one, two, and three was the music. Yeah. Duel of the Fates is such a great song. It's I love really that. good. And their version of it is fantastic. If you ever see their live performances, they all dress up like stormtroopers and sand troopers. And the lead guitar player is Darth Vader. The drummer is Boba Fett. Yeah. I imagine that they had those <laughs> costumes before they started making music. Probably, yeah. <laughs> so good. I loved it. And uh, even songs that are cheesy as hell, like this theme song to the cantina. It just goes so... They do it so well. It's fun. It's, it's a great thing to listen to. If you got a half hour to kill, listen to it. It took one song for me to realize that this album would be topping my list for February. No. 
it had to be this one. I'm a sucker for Euro metal. I'm a sucker for pomposity. I'm a sucker for anthems. I'm a sucker for female vocalists who can sound like my cow when they get gritty. Ringer of Pain covers so many bases, many of which may turn some people off, as sometimes they tend to border on pop metal. On the one hand, more than half the tracks make for a solid metal platter that would make Ronnie James proud. This includes the almost misleading opening trio of Straight Through the Heart, the title track, and King for a Day, the last of which being my personal favorite of all. On the other hand, songs like Familiar Hell and Dancing with the Beast lack in the metal department, especially when considering the expectations laid by the aforementioned openers. If you're not a fan of, say, Amaranth or the latter-day works of Nightwish or Ed Guy, then you won't wholly find solace here. Like However, if you're like me, you will equally embrace the power, the pomp, the cheese, and so on in equal measure, and enjoy the album for what it's worth. The dice, every time. 